G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Steel posts are really handy around the farm and people have been using them for years. But lots of people still use the back end of a wood splitter or a mash hammer to drive them in and really stuff up the ends of the, of the steel posts, meaning that they're much harder to work with. Today, I thought since it's raining like cats and dogs, let's put up a steel fence and try out some of the most popular and best quality post drivers on the market. So finally, we can throw away the dodgy practices of old and use some really good gear to drive in our steel posts and make the job so much easier. Guys, if you like this week's video, don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up. Now let's get on with it. All right, so let's have a look at today's lineup. Right down at the cheap and cheerful end, we've got a 50 mil nominal bore, six or seven kilo post knocker. You will find these super cheap at any rural supply store. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will never want to buy one of these because of the inherent flaws in the design. Next up, we have our 65 mil nominal bore, 12 kilo fence stay post driver. It's got a nice satisfying feeling. This is gonna drive the post in quicker and it's got handles that extend all the way down, keeping your hands away from the post driver while you're working. Next up, we've got the Sneddons. Now this has also got hand handles all the way down. This is also 65 mil nominal bore, but this has an added feature that I think anyone who employs people is gonna love. Have a listen to this. It's noise dampened. Next up, we've got another 65 mil nominal bore post driver. This one is coming in at 14 kilos. It's slightly longer. This post driver is gonna let you set the height of your posts without having to measure. This guy is set at 1200 mil, straight out of the ground. Last but not least, if you're gonna be using XL posts or the larger steel posts, you're gonna need an 80 mil nominal bore post driver. The 65s will actually confuse you because they will fit your XL post, but they'll jam as you use them. I got all excited with this Sneddon's post driver thinking it would do the maxi posts as well. I know they do sell a larger model for maxis, but the post slid in nicely. Only problem is it stayed slid in. You really need an 80 mil nominal bore post driver if you're going to be using your stock post XLs or similar products. This particular driver has a handle that goes all the way down and that's important because it weighs 20 kilos. You're going to want to get in nice and close to this and keep your hands at shoulder height the whole time you're operating it. You're going to be using the fence stay end assemblies and steel posts as intermediates and running a sheet mesh up the paddock. Last time I used the fence stay end assemblies, they went in, but gee, it was hard work with that petrol post driver. <laughs> It felt like I was hanging on to it forever. The hope is that with the new fence stay 20 kilo steel post driver, that I'm gonna be able to put these end assemblies in even easier without having to even have a motorized device to put them in. And have a look out for these nifty gate stands in an upcoming video, they are pretty good. <laughs> I've got the fence stay steel post driver all set up. My post is in place. The handles are long enough that I can actually do this on the ground. I don't have to stand on the ute like I did last time. So let's see how easy, or if indeed it does, go into the ground. Got my hearing protection, let's go. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be a Tim Thompson fencing job if we didn't find a hole full of roots. If you ever want a root found, just ask me to put a fence in. Seriously, have a look at the size of this thing. And I found that within the first half centimeter of soil. Luck is holding. So I worked out that I was getting about eight mil of penetration into the ground per strike. And with a long post like this, it was gonna take a while. So it's a good opportunity to get a mate to come over, give you a hand, and have a chat about the really important things in life. This super heavy 20 kilo post knocker might seem like a bit of overkill, but if you've only got a couple to do, it works really well. And if he's a really good mate, you can leave him to it for a while. If you're a contractor, 
Just use the knocker on the back of your tractor. Okay, so we've run out our ground wire, we've got our end assemblies installed. Now it's time to put in our intermediate posts. Now I'm going to be using two different types of galvanised steel stock post. I'm going to be using the standard size stock post from White's, and then I'm going to be every third post using their XL stock post. Just to give a little bit more strength to the fence and give it a little bit more durability. Now I'm going to use our array of post drivers to put these in the ground and compare each one and see how the different features, benefits and weights bear out in ease of use. Now here we've got our lightest, cheapest version. So let's have a look at this thing and how it works. We've got our handle right up the top. So if the post is out of the ground, and this is a standard size steel post that I'm going to put into 1200, then I've got to reach well up above my head. oh and guidelines these days tell us not to reach awkwardly outside of our normal range of movement and not to repeat a task too often. My first contention with this is that if you're going to hold it by the handles, which is the obviously preferred, you're going to have to be reaching well above your head like a monkey the whole time you're using it. Not only that, but because of its light weight, it's going to take a long time to get that post in the ground. Now the reality with this is, you're not going to hold these handles, you're going to hold it here, aren't you? And you're going to be operating somewhat like this. And this is my biggest caution with this type of post driver. Don't ever do that and don't ever give this to someone you can't trust not to do that. Because twice in 20 years of working in the horticultural industry, I've seen people overextend and come down and slice their hand on the top of the steel post. This is a really dangerous tool and if you employ people particularly it should be avoided. Not only that but it's going to take me forever to get this post into the ground. Now the one saving grace, if you are using a short post driver like this and you happen to be using the stock post, is that they come pre-marked so you know exactly how deep you're driving the post and you don't have to measure them. Next up we've got the short fence stay steel post knocker. This one's a little bit larger diameter so it fits on the post more easily. This post knocker has the feature obviously of handles from the top to the bottom. And if you're looking for a good quality post knocker that's going to be safer, this is a feature you should definitely look for because there's never going to be that temptation to hold on to the shaft of the post knocker and your hands are always kept well away and clear of the post that you're driving in just in case you overextend and come down beside the post. This is a heavier commercial style knocker. I'm not having to reach outside my range of movement. Let's see how quickly it puts the post into the ground. Now next up, we've got the short driver from Sneddon's. This one is also a 65 mil pipe. It's flared at the end. That makes it easier to get onto the posts, believe it or not. It sort of guides the post into it. It's zinc coated, so it's less likely to rust than most of the other drivers on the market. And the handle is curved to give you a better ergonomic fit. The handle actually comes towards you. So remember when I was saying before, about OH&S and not going outside your normal range of movement, this is preserving more of your normal range of movement, just that slight modification. But the best thing about this driver, and the thing I love about it, is that it's got a nylon plug between the top and the post. This means it's less likely to damage the top of the post and put that really annoying little kink in the top bag. And it also means I don't have to wear hearing protection because this thing is as quiet as a mouse and in fact they say it's the quietest driver on the market. Let's throw a post in and see if this nylon plug takes away any of the performance over the other products we're reviewing today. To be honest with you I couldn't see an appreciable difference in the amount of strikes it took to get the post down to 1200. If you employ staff and you have them using a post driver and you're worried about their hearing and OH&S, this is a clear winner in the OHS decision making process. This is a very, very cleverly designed post driver indeed. Next up we've got the 1200mm fence stay steel post driver. 
It's about five kilos heavier than the Snedden's model, and it's about five kilos less than the fence stay model designed for their end assemblies. And if you're only going to be driving stock posts, that five kilo savings in weight really is going to pay off. Let's see if it gets the post in that much quicker than the 11 odd kilo Snedden's model. And I think the clear answer in this one is yes. That extra five kilos of weight meant a lot less strikes on the post. Bear in mind that Snedden's also make a 1200 mil model. Okay, so let's sum up what we've learned. Light, cheap model you'll find at most hardware stores. Too light for the job and a safety nightmare. Avoid this at all costs. Next up, if you're gonna go for a small model, make sure, like this beautiful one here, that these handles go all the way to the bottom. That way you're not ever tempted to hold it by the shaft, you hold it by the handles. The extra weight of the fence stay model made this one well worth considering if you're driving in normal stock posts. The Big Daddy, 20 plus kilos. Not designed for driving in stock posts, it's designed for driving in round posts on end assemblies. It made mincemeat of the stock post. It got it in the ground as quick as you could like. But for sustained use every day, a bit too heavy for the purpose. The Snedden's model. An absolute gem in design. The curved handle for ergonomic ease. The nylon plug. The flared end. Make it super easy to use. Really safe. I'd love to see how their larger model performs. And I also happen to know that they make a post driver that doubles as a, as a fence post lifter. I'd love to get my hands on that one day and try that. That could be another review into the future. Next up. We have the 1200 mil fence stay post driver. This is a beautiful design product with the handles going all the way to the bottom. Very easy, very ergonomic design. And that extra weight made an appreciable difference and got that post in the ground so much quicker. Both the Snedden's and the fence line lighter models come in a larger tube diameter to accommodate the stock post XLs. So I hope this helped you guys with deciding what steel post driver to buy and what the options are out there. If you liked the video, please remember give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see any of these products, you can get onto them via links on timthompson.ag. Until next week, guys, catch you later.